Hey guys, it's your boy Marky here and uh, this is Aliana and uh, we're gonna talk about a very famous author whose name is Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm gonna be starting off by saying a brief uh, biography about him. So he was born in January 19th, 1809 uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, Poe's parents were both professionally ac professional actors but um, unfortunately they died before um, Poe was three years old. Um, Francis Allen raised him as a foster child in Richmond, Virginia. So, um, Poe was sent to the best boarding schools and later to the University of Virginia where he excelled academically. But after less than one school year, however, he was forced to leave the university when Allen refused to pay Poe's gambling debts. So, Poe had a problem with gambling and he was pretty into it. So then he returned to uh, Richmond, but his relationship with Alan deteriorated. Um, after that, he began to sell short stories to magazine at around this time, and in 1835, he became the editor of the Southern Literary Messenger in Richmond, where he moved with his aunt and cousin, Virginia. So then he married Virginia, um, and it was during these years that he established himself as a poet, short story writer and an editor so basically he was like all in one um he published some of his best known stories and poems including fall of the house of usher and the tall tall heart which i will be talking about after um so poe's work as an editor a poet and a critic had a profound impact on american and international literature he was very well known and continues to be very well known um, his stories mark him as one of the originators of both horror and detective fiction. Um, many anthologies credit him as the architect of the modern short story, which I totally agree on. Um, and also, another fun fact, he was one of the first critics to focus primarily on the effect of style and structure in a literary work. And he's been seen as a forerunner to the art for arc's sake movement. So, your, bo your boy Mark here again, and I'm going to talk about the very well-known poem, The Raven. And I'll give you a quick summary, brief summary. So it was uh, late at night when a man was sitting in his room. He was reading uh, a book, trying to forget his lost love, uh, Lenore. And all of a sudden, he hears someone or something knocking at the door. So what any person would do, calls out and uh, apologizing to the visitor. He, he apologizes to the visitor that it's fine. But when he opens the door, he finds nothing freaks him out a little bit like any human being and reassures himself that it's just a wind against the window. So he goes oh, he goes and opens the window up and in flies, you guessed it, a raven. The raven then settled in a statue above the door and for some reason, like our speaker's first instinct <coughs> is to talk to it. So the narrator asks for its name and like you would imagine usually they don't answer. However, amazingly enough, the raven answers back with one single word. Nevermore, which is kind of creepy. So, going into more depth in the story, uh, some analysis is in the story, not only does Poe allude to death itself, but he also alludes to its major effects, such as sorrow and apathy. The narrator believes that there is no cure to heal his wound, and it seems like he does not possess the strength to recover. And one of a quote, uh, a stanza in the poem, each separate dying ember rout its ghost upon the floor. Because of the raven's unexpected visit, the narrator recovers his hope and asks the prophet if there is balm in Gilead. Okay, so we'll be going back to that. I just want to now talk about the Telltale Heart really quick. Um, so this is a short story written by, obviously, Edgar Allan Poe, and it was published in 1843. It's related by an unnamed narrator who... Um, who tries to basically elude and convince the reader of his sanity while simultaneously describing a murder he committed. Um, the victim in the story was an old man with a filmy vulture eye, as it was described in the story, um, and the narrator calls it that way. Uh, the narrator emphasizes the careful calculation of the murder, and he, ca and he hides the body by dismembering it and hiding it under the floorboards. So the narrator's feelings of guilt or mental disturbance result in him hearing a thumping sound which he interprets as the dead man's beating heart so um i think that this story is like pretty creepy because well we don't even know who the narrator is or what's happening 
uh, with the narrator, we just, um, he has, like, very, uh, like, a very, like, original vocabulary, which makes everything, like, be more creepy, and it's, it's, in, it's written in first person, um, and this narrator, he insists that he's sane, but He's suffering from a disease, like nervousness, which causes um, over-acuteness of the senses, as described in the story. Um, the old man with whom he lives, uh, he has a clouded and pale vulture-like eye, as I said before. Um, and this like causes a lot of stress to the narrator because um, he he's planning to murder the old man. Um, but he also said that he loves the old man. So it's kind of a weird relationship, and I feel like the reader really needs to go in depth and like really see the um, clues that the author is giving us. Um, and also for seven nights, the narrator opens the door of the old man's room in order to shine a silver light into the evil eye. But the old man's vulture eye is always closed. So it's basically impossible to do the work. Okay, so now that we've basically stated the obvious, um, talking about the uh, summaries, as most of you guys know, now we're going to be talking more in depth um, about the literary devices. So I'm going to start off with the Telltale Heart. Um, there's obviously a lot of foreshadowing. Um, symbolism, obviously symbolism would be, a symbol would be the Eye of the Vulture. Um, style, form, and tone are very important in the Total Heart. The sentences are set up like very choppy and disjointed. Um, I think to show the narrator's scattered mind because the narrator is literally like all over the place which can confuse the reader but if you pay attention you can totally get it. Um, also there's a lot of frequent repetition which demonstrates his obsessive nature and his tendency to interrupt himself um, mid-sentence which shows his illogical thinking patterns. Hey guys, it's Marky back in town and back in business here. <laughs> so after the depth analysis of The Raven, we're back with some uh, literary elements that were implemented into the story. So one of the big ones is repetition. So the word nevermore is repeated at the end of each stanza, which creates a mel melancholy tone to the poem. Yeah. So the second example of a literary device is symbolism. Ravens often represent like death or sadness, which is most, which is what happens in this poem. So symbolism is a key element as Raven is symbolized. Also, I think like symbols in both of our stories, like Telltale Heart and um, the Raven are very obvious. Like in the Telltale Heart, um, the vulture of the eye is repeated a lot. And the Raven, I mean, the title of the, of the whole poem is called The Raven. So I think that's pretty obvious. And um, back in business again, uh, there's like an internal rhyme so oh, yeah. there's like um, a rhyme word involving like at the beginning of the line and another in the middle so it's like it seems odd but it skips but there's a lot of alliteration too which is very important so that means like alliteration means like the first word and the second word start with the same letter so it gives you more like a, yeah, I think that's cool that's one of his um very well-known skills that he has. Yeah, and he also implements a lot of similes and metaphors and, uh, yep. All that good stuff. Okay, so we really hope we've helped you um, go more into depth into these two stories and about this author, and um, we hope you guys have a good day. All right, later, boys. Thank you.